I know. Probably at this point, I'm starting to annoy you when I talk about the importance of developer experience when it comes to Mon repos. But have a look at this one. So adding an X to an existing Mon repo is as easy as adding a single NX package at the root level. And then what you usually do is you create an NX JSON or you just run NX init to create a config file where you can customize the behavior to your workspace specifically. So things like what cache preparations do we have there? So what does that mean? Well, if you look at that Remix app here, it has those couple of scripts and the build one that an X picks up, this might be a good candidate for being cacheable. Now look at this. If I go to that cache of operations and I start creating the quotes, I get autocomplete. And this filters what scripts I have in my workspace. So if I go to my Remix app and I add another one, and then I go back to my NX JSON, and I'll have this one as well. Another thing that often comes up is defining task dependencies. So whenever my Remix app builds, I want to run also the build for shared UI, which Remix depends on. So next you can have the target defaults. So you can go in and say my build script, and this depends on, again, out completion. So I can see all the build, the dev, the start, whatever I have in scripts here in my workspace. And it even explains what that carrot symbol in front means. So it runs all the dependencies that have that build task. It will also run the target before it runs the build of my Remix app, which is exactly what I want. So this is the kind of DX we talk here about. How is this possible? With this extension, which is called NX console. You can go to NX.dev or just to the Visual Studio Marketplace and install it. And this works for NX as well as Learner version 5 and onwards. Now try to beat this.